Hey everyone, how's it going today? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And you know, over the course of the past couple days, there's been a lot of discussion surrounding the rise of Skywalker. First with the world premiere on Monday night, a lot of the reactions that came out were actually surprisingly positive. But when the review embargo dropped on Tuesday night, or I should say Wednesday morning at 12.01 a.m., the Rotten Tomatoes score was not as good as you thought that it would be, considering that the reactions coming out of the world premiere were pretty, pretty high. And the response I guess you could say the result of this has been pretty fascinating to watch. Now, first and foremost, I would just like to say uh, a very large thank you to my very generous audience who helped me fund a trip to Los Angeles so I could go to a press screening on Tuesday. I enjoyed the movie. I have a spoiler free review that's out. You guys can check it out. And one thing I do want to say is that a lot of the comments I've been getting are people who are happy to be Star Wars fans again and that they have seen the movie themselves overseas. They will be seeing it here in the States today uh, and that they are very satisfied with what they have seen. And many people out there have actually been asking the question, what the hell is going on with the Rotten Tomatoes score, which according to it right now is at 57% uh, off of a total review count of 267 people. Now, this has been basically where it's been at, right? It's been as low as 54, I believe as high as 59, and it's settled somewhere now for the past about 16 hours in the 57% mark. Now, a lot of people out there are thinking that this is the final score for what the movie is going to be. Truth of the matter is, it's not. The movie open wide, opens wide tonight in the United States. A lot of the Rotten Tomato approved critics who maybe didn't get invited to press screenings are going to be able to go and see it. And then they're going to be able to chime in with their thoughts and their opinions. And, and I can actually, to an extent, somewhat prove this. Uh, but first things first, what we need to know about Rotten Tomatoes is there are over 6,000 Rotten Tomato approved critics in the entire world. So when you view that uh, 267, it really is a low number, comparatively speaking, to the rest of what's available in Rotten Tomatoes. However, when you go and you apply it to, let's say, uh, like the rest of the franchise, you'll be able to see that there is a, well, a bit of a corresponding amount of critics who review the movie. So coming over here to The Force Awakens from 2015, we can see that it's sitting at a 93% certified fresh with 423 Rotten Tomato critics. This was from four years ago, as again, it keeps going up. Looking here at Rogue One, a Star Wars, a Star Wars story, uh, 83% with 433 critics having rated it. That is 10 up from the previous movie. Then in 2017, we got The Last Jedi at a, at a high mark of 91%, with 455 approved critics having given it a review. I mean, the audience score obviously there is pretty reflective of how people do view the movie. And then we got Solo with 461 reviewers having come in and added to that overall number, giving it a solid uh, 70%. It's so far the only Star Wars movie on Rotten Tomatoes uh, that's been out for a long period of time that's not at a certified fresh benchmark. And then when I talk about the, the you know, Skywalker and the rise of the tomato meter, what's going to happen here ultimately, or Star Wars, the rise of the tomato meter, if I could actually think today, uh, what we're going to be seeing tonight is quite frankly, a large influx of new reviewers coming to the table and adding in about another 200 reviews, if not more, considering that they just opened up another 600 people into the certified list, making it the 6,000 uh, that are going to have have different opinions and different perspectives. So it's either possible that this score will go up or this score will go down. My prediction is it's going to hit probably 60%. It's going to get to that fresh uh, fresh rating. It's going to get to that fresh marking, uh, but it's not going to get certified fresh. It's going to stay in that area, uh, but the audience review score is probably, in my opinion, where you're going to get the most bang for your buck in regards to Rotten Tomatoes. And you might be asking yourself, well, Matt, what does any of this have to do with the price of tea in China? Why are you bringing it up? The movie's getting cranked across across the coals, the coals across the board, who cares about Rotten Tomatoes? Well, that's actually a very fair point. I traditionally don't care about Rotten Tomatoes as anything other than just a bit of statistical information. I look at it as just being maybe an overall metric of how to look at how some people are viewing it, but it's not going to be the be all end all. It's one of the reasons why I don't necessarily give in to a lot of polls because they are, you know, oftentimes a small, um, sample size of people. And I know I've talked about it in the past before too. And I was called out for the poll that I responded to this case being game of Thrones season eight, uh, was only 2000 people. And people were saying that doesn't make any sense. You can't sit there and use that as an actual metric of, of how people feel about this based on 2000 people. And the reason why I bring that up is because, well, 
when you look at a certain group of people out there, and I'm just going to name them, the fandom menace predominantly, uh, and I have a whole other video talking about that here coming later on today, uh, and they, they've been going after the Rotten Tomato score for this movie, trying to claim that they were right, that the movie is terrible, that it's god-awful, that Star Wars is over, Star Wars is dead, Star Wars is plagued, JJ killed it, yada, 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 all of those things. To which case, I just have to respond back with a bit, a bit of, a, of a hearty chuckle, right? Throw my head back and laugh sort of thing. Because how is it that when, let's say, for example, Captain Marvel came out and got high marks from critics, uh, the same people, the Phantom Menace and other commentators on YouTube uh, came out and attacked it, attacked, the, attacked it as just being access media, blue check marks, defending it. They did the same thing for The Last Jedi. Never mind the fact that, as I just showed you, it's been pretty consistent across the board, with the exception of Solo, uh, for Rotten Tomato critics, as well as even the audience score. So what we're looking at here is a situation where Rotten Tomatoes only really matters depending on what narrative you're trying to push as a result. When you look at a movie like The Rise of Skywalker, one that was going to be heavily conflicted no matter who did it, no matter how it ended up, it's ending 42 years of storytelling, it's ending a nine film saga, and it's coming off of the most divisive film in the entire franchise, even more so than The Phantom Menace. And when you look at it from that perspective, you have to then take everyone's commentary with like a Mount Everest-sized grain of salt. Even my commentary, my review, I have my own thoughts and my own opinions on it. Take anything anyone says with a grain of salt. But what I'm referring to here are the people that don't quite know how to argue Rotten Tomatoes. Right. That they that's either they're attacking it when it's a score that they don't like or they're somewhat defending it when it's a score that they do. Again, it all depends on the narrative that you're trying to sell. If you're trying to attack a movie and it has a low audience or a low review score, they go, oh, look at this. You see the critics hated it. It's a bad movie. But if it's a movie that you maybe like and the review score is a bit lower, like let's say uh, in the case of Alita Battle Angel to an extent, then people come out there and they attack it. This happens all the time. When it comes to Rotten Tomatoes and it comes to the dissemination of the tomato meter, it is one of the most hypocritical arguments to make on YouTube. It is, or just in general, in commentary in general, it's one of the most hypocritical things you can do because it all depends on how you're feeling that day. And the thing is, when it comes to the divisive nature of Rotten Tomatoes, they like it. Right. Fandango, they like it. They like the attention. They like that people always argue over this arbitrary metric. You can go and look at, let's say, like Metacritic and get what you might believe is a more fair representation. I think right now Rise of Skywalker is sitting at about 53 percent. But then again, not as many people use Metacritic. And so the sample size is still pretty small. When you look at the idea here of just 257 people having gone and reviewed the Rise of Skywalker thus far for Rotten Tomatoes out of how many millions upon millions upon millions of people are going to be seeing it tonight and over the course of this weekend, because it's currently estimated to pull in about four hundred and fifty million dollars globally in its first weekend and even coming off of the world premiere with the social media reactions it had already seen pre-ticket sales increase to where it was matching The Last Jedi, which had a week, uh, you know, which had an opening of around, I think, $205 million. So while there are people out there that do look at these reactions as being a metric for whether or not they will, in fact, purchase the particular film tickets that they are talking about, I do believe that you also need to take it entirely with a grain of salt and look at the motivation of the person who is espousing that info. Which way are they skewing the data? Are they saying that this is a valid metric this week because it backs up their narrative versus the next week when that same metric could be turned in case or just because the 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 narrative shifts right and i want to kind of put a thought experiment out there i don't know if this is going to happen but i just kind of want to put it out there when we get to the end of the weekend right and i'm talking like tuesday when the dust is settled when the final box office tallies are in for the opening weekend of the rise of skywalker and we can look and see how much has been spent and how much it's made globally and everything else i want to come back and look at the tomato meter when more people have had a chance to see it and more reviewers have had a chance to get on in in order to give it their approved opinions. And I say approved opinions because that's how the tomato meter operates. So when that happens, is it going to go up or is it going to go down? Well, I think it's going to go to about 60. I think it's going to become fresh. That's where it's going to stay. It's going to be low 60s, nothing more, nothing less. That's my prediction. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm putting out there. That's what my gut feelings are telling me. And based upon, again, just looking at the previous data, it seems that's going to probably end up being the case. 
So then my question becomes, will we see a certain group of people out there, in this case, the fandom menace, those who have been really talking up the Rotten Tomato score, will they come out and change their narrative? Will they come out and say that, well, more people actually like the movie, critically speaking, than not? Does that change their opinion of how they've been approaching covering this movie? That's what I'm very curious to see if we're actually going to get that type of narrative shift, depending on where the needle finally lies in regards to the opening of The Rise of Skywalker. Now, I have no way of knowing where it's going to go or what's going to happen. But if you just look at the data and look at the information and look at how these things play out, you could see it's probably going to hit about the low 60s is where it might stay. And they've also been, we, but I'll be fair. We've been wrong before. I mean, look at the, uh, the how the critics responded to the Joker. It came out of Venice, high marks, almost 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. It went to Toronto. A lot of the more left-leaning blue checkmark type people saw the film, and then they started saying that it could cause violence, and then it started dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping to the point of where it lost its certified fresh rating, but it still went on to gross $1.1 billion. So... Again, the narrative on that was the critics are wrong in their opinion because the movie is good and they were attacking it. But here the critics are right because they're attacking the movie. Do we see how there's a bit of a shift there? It just depends on where your narrative perspective lies. And that, of course, is just the entire point of this video. I'm curious to know what you guys have to say about this. Let me know down in the comments below. I'll talk to you guys later. Have yourself a great day. Uh, please like the video if you liked what I have to say. If not, that's cool too. But be sure no matter what to leave a comment. That's what I want the most. I want to hear your guys' thoughts because I enjoy responding to comments. And I'll talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day and peace out. Hey, thank you very much for watching the video. If you want to keep the conversation going, and if you made it this far, you clearly do, come on in and join the Discord. Link is in the video description. Can't wait to see you there. Have yourself a great day, and peace out.